Welcome to Hancock Conversations. Join President Dr. Kevin G. Walters and explore the stories behind the people and places that make Allen Hancock College the unique hub for learning that it is today. Welcome to Hancock Conversations. I'm Kevin Walters, Superintendent President here at Allen Hancock College. This is the place where you can get your information about what's going on at Hancock and get a little bit of history along the way. Today we're joined by one of my bosses, Trustee Greg Pensa. Uh, Trustee Pensa has a relationship with the college dating back into the 70s. So he's been a, a longtime supporter of the college and is an alumnus uh, as well. So um, welcome, Greg. Well, thanks for having me, Kevin. Uh, actually started in 69. So oh, I was trying to be, <laughs> <laughs> be kind. So um, so tell us a little bit about what, what Hancock was like back in, in, in the early late 60s, early 70s. Well, at that time, uh, your pathway was if you were going to transfer, was to come to a community college. And so uh, a lot of my friends from San Inez Valley, we didn't have the option of going to any community college. You had to come to Hallen Hancock College. A lot of people in San Inez Valley want to go over the hill into Santa Barbara City College. So uh, it was a small school then. I remember you could smoke in the student center, and that was a big deal, <laughs> uh, you know, when you first came up here. But uh, uh, probably 20, 30 of my classmates out of 120 came to Hancock and got degrees and transferred and uh, uh, went on into business. So it was, it was a small college. And you knew all the guys because you played sports with them. Right. They were here from Lompoc, Rigetti, Santa Maria. So you knew all those guys. And so it was, it was a community Close-knit community. Really small. And you were on the baseball team back then. Yeah, I played for John Osborne. I was on the team, didn't play much, saw a lot of baseball, <laughs> traveled all over the Central Coast. We went up to Merced, Reedley, Kalinga. We're all in our league. It was all north of, of Santa Barbara County. Um, and we actually had a very strong team. Doak Moore, who some people might know, uh, Jimmy Deany was on the team. Doak went on and played uh, professional baseball. He uh, ended up uh, coaching at uh, – Rigetti for many years, and he coached Robin Ventura, uh, was one of his main players. So I still have relationships with all, a lot of those guys and uh, fond memories of Coach Osborne, who uh, was a legendary coach here in Al Hancock College, and it was fun. But like I said, watch a lot of baseball. <laughs> but you know what? It's uh, you know that's awesome when you uh, when you get a chance to play on a team that then they were competing for state championships every year back then. Yeah, we uh, were in the final four. We lost a two out of three series here in Santa Maria over at Elks Field by one run. And uh, the team I think we played was College of the Redwoods, and they had two guys that went on and played professional baseball. So it, w it was high quality baseball. We used to travel down to Cerritos and play a tournament during Easter, and Cerritos was always the number one college in the nation. It was called the Casey Stingle Tournament, and mm -hmm. Casey Stingle actually came out and handed out the trophies at the end of the tournament. Oh, wow, that's a baseball legend right there. That's yeah. pretty, pretty great. Uh, so, so you went from Hancock, you went down to San Diego State, got a major in film, which fit right in with the family business of gas stations. So what did your dad think about that? <laughs> well, I always like to say I took the John Madden path. I came to Allen Hancock, and then I went to San Diego State. Um, well, I was really interested. I got a degree in telecommunications and film. While I was at Hancock, I served an internship at the local TV station. I used to get sideline passes for the Charger games. That was pretty cool. Uh, also, I uh, broadcast... Uh, college sports there i did volleyball and basketball for san diego state on our local little college station we won the national championship in volleyball my senior year so we had a couple of all americans so that was a lot of fun but you're right i got a degree in telecommunications and film but i got an opportunity to go into business with my father his health started failing a little bit and uh, we actually were in the service station business i was uh, in charge of mergers and acquisitions because immediately we bought two other gas stations so I was the one that went in and hired the people, did all the bits and pieces on the um, escrows to close them. So it, it was a great relationship. And, you know, I think it's, it's, it's instructive when we talk about what's going on here at the college and we're talking about offering four-year degrees. And just the, the fact that you have that degree and it and it's, doesn't necessarily have to be subject-specific all the time, but, you know, a, a good college degree teaches you how to learn. So you can go and learn how to buy a gas station. You can work with your dad and you get all those tools for research and just figuring out how things work. And uh, I think that's something that's, that's so lacking in our community right now. And, and you've been a big supporter of trying to get to these four-year degrees for, for our local community. 
Well, the baccalaureate program, because we, as you know, Kevin, we have place-bound students here. Right. You know, and our closest community college affiliations is Channel Islands, which is 115 miles away, which is unrealistic. So, uh, you know, a four-year degree not only teaches you about the subject matter, but it, you also have to follow a course of design and take certain electives and classes to graduate. So it shows that, e that you can learn and that you are having an, a, a level of intelligence to meet a, meet a goal. Yeah. So, um, so as you were doing your career in, uh, uh, as a small business owner, um, you, you served on a couple of boards down in San Diego Valley, but ultimately you got on the uh, Allen Hancock College Foundation board uh, as a member. When did you start doing that? I actually came on the board in uh, 2000. Leonard Marshman, who was a mobile executive that had moved to the Valley, was on the board. And I had a mobile gas station, and he and I would have lunch periodically. A super guy, a gentleman, taught me about how to fundraise. In fact, our first big ask was uh, we were doing a capital success program. And he and I were able to raise $50,000 from the shoe mash. And we ended up taking uh, Mr. Ortega to lunch, I think, three or four times. But he was a very a gentleman. Like when a woman came to the table, he stood up until she sat. And so he taught me a lot about fundraising. That's awesome. So um, so at that point, then, you're, you're associated with the college. And um, you, you followed Carol Anders onto the board, right? So Correct. Carol was going to leave. And so I think she kind of <coughs> recruited you to run for the board, right? Absolutely. Well, I had, uh, I was 10 years as a trustee at Solving School before that, and then I went on to the board at the foundation, and I was just terming out. You serve nine years and you term out. And, you know, one of the things I want to mention here is part of the experience on the board was helping pass the bond in 2006 oh, with yeah. Tim Fleming. So we had a special group. Uh, Jim Bray was our chairman, and uh, that's when I first met Jim. And uh, we formed a group, and we put signs up all over San Inez Valley, Los Alamos, Santa Maria. I spoke at a few uh, civic organizations about it. So one of my highlights of being on the foundation was getting that bond passed. And we had to get 55% right. at that time. When I was at Solving School, we passed a bond. You had to get two-thirds vote. That's amazing. And that yeah. was back in 1988. And so we were able to build a gym and six classrooms at Solving School. But... Um, it was just a great experience, and it was a great transition for me because I knew Dr. Ortiz, I knew Felix Hernandez, I knew a lot of people on staff, Betty Miller. So it was an easy transition because I knew all the good things that we were doing at Hancock. So, Well, that's been great, and you've been a great representative for San Inez Valley. I remember when I first got hired, um, your first question to me was how we're going to get San Inez more involved in, uh, uh, in Hancock. And my first thought was like, oh, man, that's a heavy lift because – you know, Santa Barbara City College sits right on the beach, and it's the same distance away. And, um, you know, we, we started plugging away at it, and we, we've really, you know, in, invested a lot of time and effort in, like, making sure the San Inez Valley knows that Hancock is, is you know, wanting to serve them. Uh, I think the Promise program has been huge. So oh, we're, yeah. we're starting to see record numbers of, of students from San Inez High School coming up as part of the Promise program. Now, we were we were getting – you know, sometimes single digits, but usually never more than 10 or 12 students from San Inez, and now we're getting 40 to 50 a year coming up um, just so they can take care, uh, take advantage of the Promise program. Well, uh, that's the biggest, highest, the highest percentage of increase has been the San Inez Valley. And, uh, you know, when I talk to students there that are talking about going to City College, I say, you know, that their promise doesn't work for you because you don't live in the district. And, uh, you know, if you go to Hancock, you get the first year free. And I think the another good thing was that we moved the campus out to San Inez High School, and, you know, we're going to be working more on a concurrent enrollment, and, uh, you know, there's a lot of community ed there, but it puts us right on the campus, and we, we did a survey a couple of years ago, and they said you really need to move from the city of Solving over to the campus, and we have. Yeah, that, that's worked out really well, and, you know, one, one of the things I'm most proud of for our team putting together is when the, the – state changed the funding formula for high schools and they went to the locally controlled funding formula that took away the funds that San Inez high school had for uh, career education. And, uh, I remember Scott Corey ca calling me up and saying, Hey, w we don't know what we're going to do. We can't, we can't fund this ourselves. It was like $600,000 worth of, uh, uh, funding so that they could have career education. And, uh, you know, we got our team together and they figured out how we could offer concurrent enrollment there and really support, 
you know, the automotive and welding and, and some of those kind of programs out at San Inez. And so that's been a great partnership uh, for, for the students um, and for both institutions. Well, as we both know, um, with our declining enrollment, concurrent enrollment is a, is a big feature. And, you know, we're hoping that we can, and you and I have had conversations about ramping it up at San Inez High School. Yeah, yeah, that's, uh, and, and it's it's cool that San Inez High School actually makes deliberate attempts to hire faculty that are they would be qualified to teach at the community college level as well. So it makes it a lot easier for us to be able to offer offer classes for them. So um, so you've been on the board for 13 years now as a trustee. Um, you know, what are some of the things you like about being a trustee? Well, I, you know, as we just discussed, I, you know, enjoy representing San Inez Valley. You know, when you're in Santa Maria, Hancock is gold. Mm-hmm. In San Inez Valley, you've got competition with UCSB and Santa Barbara City College. And being a little more affluent area it's not always on uh people's minds you know they're thinking that they want their kids to go to a four-year school so um you know it's it's you know we do so many good things here you know we have a hundred percent acceptance rate at allen hancock college it's been a big influence on my whole family my dad was here at hancock he went to school with Patty Boyd. I've got a yearbook that I shared with I, I you. I saw that. That was awesome, yeah. Um, you know, he ended up going into, uh, you know, World War II as a mechanic, which he learned here at Allen Hancock College. I have four children. They've all been through the system. I, you know, I have a daughter that teaches at San Marcos. She went through community college system. I have a son that has businesses. He went through the community college system. I had a daughter who was going to be a dental hygienist, and I have a daughter that went through the wine industry, all because of community college. So I really believe in the system, and, you know, like I said, we have a 100% acceptance rate. Here. Yeah, that's right. We take everybody. That's Our old friend B.J. Jones always said that, that, you know, we'll, we'll, we take everybody. But, you know, I, I think, and in, in, in you're, you're one who doesn't like to take credit, but when I look around campus and I see, um, you know, this is your 13th year as a trustee, right? So, um you know, 13 years ago, the new administration buildings didn't exist. 13 years ago, there was no public safety training center. Um, there was no, you know, theater building for, um, you know, the new um, PCPA building wasn't there. And it's certainly the new fine arts building wasn't there. So, I mean, you, you've right, been right in the, in the throes of making sure all those things were completed and are out there to serve students. Well, I, one of the things that I was excited about coming on the board was that we were now going to be able to use some funds. And Andy Dinsmore and I happened to work at the Shumash Casino together, and he was showing me plans for public safety when we were both working at the, the, the Shumash. Uh, and uh, so it was very exciting. I knew Larry Lair very well. We've been longtime friends when, from when he lived in the Valley. So, And I knew what a great team we had here. And it, it, probably the most exciting thing was seeing the transformation of this campus. When I bring friends up here or my kids up here and they go, oh my God, it looks like a college campus now. You know, you look like you're at a four-year institution. Yeah. Yeah, I remember going to counseling and having to stand outside because there wasn't enough room to, to go. You had to wait your turn outside the building to go in to see the counselor. Yeah, so. that was that, that, old, uh, that old administration building. I'll never forget, that was, that was my first year here was in that uh, the original administration and student services building. And, uh, I met a lot of students that way though, cause they were right outside my office waiting to see counselors. So I could, uh, kind of sneak out there and, and talk to them. And, uh, so it, it, it's been great. And so now you've, you've sort of layered, um, your time on the board. You're, you're actually in a statewide leadership position on, on the, uh, community It's called the California community college trustee board of the triple CT. Um, and, and you've become a very active and, and uh, well-thought-of leader in that. What, what are you enjoying about being on that statewide board? Well, I really joined it for a selfish reason, was to become more aware of what is going on at the state level. And, you know, as we're very sensitive to the budget and legislature there. So my first goal was to learn about what's going on in Sacramento and bring that back to, to – to you and to the to the to the college and as you know every time I go to a meeting I come back with several things or how are we doing this or and most of the time I'm finding out that we're ahead of the curve and uh, I'm very involved in the diversity equity inclusion and accessibility or anti-racism the A changes um, 
um, committee. We put on several town halls. We've actually a- were able to include uh, Dr. McNulty in one of our town halls, and she talked about her culturally responsive curriculum. Um, and so I've been very involved in that. Um, and it's significant to know what's going on in the legislature because that greatly affects us. And in, in the same with the budget, because we're a boomer bust state. And right now, you know, everybody's worrying about a recession and, you know, we get money earmarked for us and then we have the May revise and it changes. So I get a lot of knowledge um, and I hope to bring that back to the, to, to Hancock and to you to, to discuss, you know, where we're going and what our plans are. You know, I think one of the things, and we, we didn't talk about this before, so we might have to edit it in post, but but uh, one of the things that I've been so impressed with what you're doing is, you know, I mean, you're you're in your 70s now, right? Yes. So, um, and you grew up in the San Inez Valley, which during your whole time of growing up was, was not a diverse community and is still limited in its diversity. And so here you are at the later stages of your life kind of delving into something that you didn't really have any interaction with and, and, and to see you adopt that and work into that. Uh, I think personally, how's that just personally been for you to, to look at like, Oh, this is a really important way to think. And, and, and maybe, you know, to help you understand your kids better, you know, obviously helps you understand our students better. Well, in my employment, um, you're right. It's solving San Inez Valley, uh, there's, it's pretty wide. It's a Danish community. <laughs> um, you know, I, I did have some friends, you know, when I came to Hancock, uh, you know, uh, there was some of the football players. Uh, I, and everybody that was on the teams here were all local high schools. We had nobody on the baseball team that was not from Santa Barbara County high schools. So um, I think as a person, my wife said, it's helped me grow. I think, uh, you know, in my employment, I employed people that had green cards. And I, you know, knew that they struggled. And... Uh, you know, it was a personal, you know, they lived across the street and they didn't have a car and they had four kids and they were supporting a, a whole family. So I, you know, got a little bit of understanding there, but I think everybody needs a fair opportunity. And, uh, and uh, you know, the pushback about diversity, you know, we all have um, experiences in life. We all have um, talents that we can bring to the table and the more people around the table with diverse attitudes and and uh, backgrounds, I think you come to a better uh, decision. Yeah, I, I, I just, I, I, you know, I agree with Jackie. Jackie's Greg's wife. I'm, I'm looking at the camera like somebody's out there. But, uh, you know, Jackie, I, I've, I, I've seen it. It's the the growth that I've seen from you as a trustee and as as a person. I think it's really been able to take those things that you're learning and and apply them and see how they're acting on campus and and the fact that you're asking the questions about how are we making sure our most vulnerable students are being protected, um, I think is, is tremendous to, um, that, that you've been able to do that. And we've seen, I mean, you know, you, you know other trustees that that hasn't been so easy for them. We don't need to talk about those trustees. But uh, uh, it, it, it's been good to see all of our trustees leading on these issues of what can we do to make it better for students. And it's not just a matter of, you know, we're going to make sure we offer classes and try to offset some finances. We're really understanding that broad need for all of our students. And, uh, and, and so I think that's a, a great way for, for you and for the board to, you know, to move forward. Well, one of the things that I was thinking about when you asked me about this uh, podcast was the diversity of the board. When mm-hmm. I came on the board, it was four white males and one black male. Now we have three women, two Hispanics, one black one Jewish person and one white male, me. <laughs> so it, the board has completely changed, but it's also shown the diver- it represents the diversity of our college. Yeah, yeah. I think it's great when you look at our board and you see a board that looks like uh, looks like the Northern Santa Barbara County community. I think that's a, a really positive aspect. And I think one of the other things that's been great about the board, and we've had some other board members on as well, and we've we've talked about this with them, is that you know it's you know, we, the board by accreditation standards and state law is supposed, you know, you have the final say on what happens at the college, but you're really supposed to let the college day-to-day operations go. And our board is really good about that. Our board is really good at making sure we're financially sound, making sure students are being served, but not getting involved in the day-to-day activities. And um, I think you've become a leader here and in the state with helping other boards understand you know, what are the things I need, you know, that you should be doing that would make your college successful. So um, 
Talk about how you see that at the triple CT with some of the things you see at other colleges that are kind of crazy. Well, uh, as you and I know, there's 116 community colleges in 73 districts. Um, you know, I see trustees that it's a platform for another political position. You can tell just by talking to them and, you know, their attitudes at, at meetings. Um, you know, uh, the majority, though, are, are concerned about the students. And, you know, we talk about it here in Hancock and we talk about it at the state board. You know, students come first and how does this affect the students? And sometimes you get into discussions about finance or legislature and you've got to come back to why are we talking about this? We're all here for the students. That's right. why we got elected. That's our platform, hopefully, that we got elected on. And, that uh, you know, we're student-focused. Yeah. yeah, that's great. So um, let's let's just wrap up with some more fun conversation about, you know, you're retired now. You're, you're a big cyclist and hiker, and uh, you and Jackie like to travel a lot. So, um, you know, you and Jackie do a lot together. What are some of your favorite things to do? Well, we have, uh, we're going to go see our daughter who lives in Cody, Wyoming. Uh, that's where our four grandchildren are. Um, so, you know, Jackie and I, um, I'm a cyclist. I try and cycle twice a week. Uh, we do a lot of hiking. We were fortunate to spend a couple of weeks in uh, Switzerland one year with an, a fellow Rotarian, and uh, that was great. We had to do a lot of training because you're at some altitude there, and being in your 60s, you know, you have to be ready <laughs> when you get there. Uh you know, the one thing I'll say about Jackie, is she's very supportive. As you know, Kevin, I'm involved in other boards and in Rotary. And whenever we're doing something where we're doing a public service and we need some help, she's always right there with me. So she's been a great support. And, you know, we have a lot of meetings with Hancock. So she's very understanding that, you know, I've got to travel up to Santa Maria and, and uh, do things. So, um, you know, it, it makes it a lot easier to serve. And, you you know, you've got to have that relationship with your your significant other to to do the things that you do yeah and yeah jackie's great and it's funny because i um, mean you know, i'll show up at an event with my wife and you're there and jackie's there and, and jackie always tells shannon you're at every event and it's like well jackie so are you <laughs> <laughs> so uh jackie keeps a pretty busy schedule so uh you know the other thing we haven't really talked about though is pcpa um uh, the, the other um when i first hired on and i you know i'd done my research at the college or so i thought and i you know i'd seen pcpa and oh that's a great drama program it's, it's kind of hard from the outside when you don't know what pcpa is to really understand that and you at and you ask me about you know how happy i was to be at a college with a program like pcpa and i stammered something about yeah that's absolutely fantastic and walked off I'm like i gotta go figure out what's going on at pcpa because that's this is obviously a you know it was clear it was a bigger thing than i thought it was <laughs> and you know so now we have this conservatory theater that's generating you know like 300 fts a year and i think my favorite part of pcpa is actually the the um the fact that we bring students you know every thursday we do a student matinee of whatever show we're doing and then on uh, you know, every fall we do a traveling show where, where um, they take a they take a program designed to um, you know almost an after school special type show to elementary schools, but but it's afternoon special with a real focus on modern issues of bullying, of uh, racial equity, those kind of things, and you know that hits more than ten thousand students right there. So um, when you look at what these students are doing and our faculty and leaders in that program. Um, PCPA is huge, and you're you're a huge proponent not only of PCPA but of the Solving Theater Fest where we perform our summer shows. So, um, you know, g give us a little your thoughts on PCPA. And well, as somebody that might be listening to this, we're the only community college that has a program like this in the United States mm -hmm. where you can get a certificate in acting or in a technical field, sound, lighting, uh, production. So, yeah, you know, it's a huge economic impact on the San Inez Valley. When people say, well, you know, if I come up to Valley, what do I need to do? The first thing I tell them is you need to go to a PCA, PCPA performance because you're going to sit close. We've got a great sound system, which Allen Hancock College was able to provide, um, and they've reformulated the theater now. So, you know, you're going to be 10 feet away from professional actors. And, you know, I've been to Broadway in New York. I think – Personally, the quality that we have here at PCPA is just as good as you're going to see in New York. For, for a lot of shows in New York, you're right. And certainly as good as the traveling shows that come through, you know, New York. And, you know, they're not from New York, but, you know, they come and travel through the Midwest. And 
we're, we're every bit that good where our, our students and faculty are building the sets and designing costumes and running the lighting and the sound. And then the, you know, the, the student actors are just a phenomenal talent. There's a lot of energy in that program. Well, one thing I remember when I first came here, Tim Bennett, who was with the Electrical Workers Brotherhood Union, he always said, we provide you a career, not a job. Mm-hmm. And that has always stuck with me, and that's what we do at PCPA. It's not just a hobby. These people are going to go from here, and they're desired in Broadway, Los Angeles, because of their technical skills. Yeah. So that when they see that certificate from Allen Hancock College, it's the golden ticket for a job. So yeah. they're, they're able to, to – and when you talk to those students, just like when we opened the Stagecraft last uh, week, you know, 6.9 million of the Measure I bond – Talking to those students, they're so enthusiastic about what they're doing in this new f- facility. And as Mark Brewer said, <laughs> it's going to be better than a lot of places you go to work at professionally when yeah. you're doing set construction. Yeah, so our technical theater students um, over the last several years, and I have, the, the pandemic may have blocked some of this, but you know, routinely 100% of the students finishing that are getting a job in some sort of entertainment industry, whether they're, you know, they might be working on a, on a cruise ship or they might go to work for Disney or Universal, um, or they might go to work in a regional theater. And some have gone to Broadway. We have, you know, we have a lot of Tony award winners that came out of, uh, came out of PCPA and the acting students have a similar success where, you know, they're, you know, they're, they're actors. So they don't really get jobs the way that we think of um, somebody being employed, but they're, you know, they're certainly getting, um, they're getting gigs working in that same kind of entertainment industry so uh, it, it's, you know, it, it's way more than, than just drama classes. It's, it's a full-on career preparation program, and um, I think we're pretty fortunate to have that. So, yeah, Absolutely, yeah. and, you know, we have a great director with Mark Brewer that uh, always has that enthusiasm about it. And like I said, talking to the, the kids, you know that you're doing something that they're just totally 100% invested in. Yeah, it would be great. You know, if you love something half as much as Mark loves putting on theater, you'd be – be in pretty good shape, right? So, um, well, I'm I'm grateful that you're on our board, and uh, um, we're we're a better college for your service, and and it's great to have alumni who understand what happens at Hancock College who come back and serve in these kind of leadership positions. So, um, so thanks for joining us to do this, and uh, we'll look forward to um, many more years of you being on the board and being part of Hancock College. Okay, thank you for having me, Kevin. Yeah. This has been Hancock Conversations. I'm Superintendent President Kevin Walters, and we've been talking to uh, our board president, Mr. Gregory Penza. Thanks, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for listening to Hancock Conversations. Want to hear more? Listen to more episodes at hancockcollege.edu slash podcasts or subscribe on Apple Podcasts or Spotify.